We use the words leader and commander synonymously. We should not forget that there are far more staff officer assignments than there are command billets. And a good staff officer can and should display the same leadership as a commander. While it takes a good staff officer to initiate an effective plan, it requires a leader to ensure that the plan is properly executed. That is why you and I have been taught that the work of collecting information, studying it, drawing a plan, making a decision is 10% of the job and seeing that the plan, seeing the plan through is the other 90%. A well-trained officer is one who could serve effectively either as a staff officer or as a commander. You know, this is the the conversation that you and I have. We've had it at the muster a few times because uh, when and I wrote about it in Extreme Ownership with Seth Stone and writing on his <laughs> writing on his Humvee window. Um, relax. Here's what you do when you start getting shot at, bro. One, relax. Two, look around. Three, make a call. And then you and I had a conversation about, about it, and you were lining it up with the OODA loop. And the last thing in the in the OODA loop is act. After you decide, you act. And they didn't quite line up because I didn't say execute or act when I put that thing on Seth Stone's board on his window. And the reason I didn't have to say that is because his platoon was like ready to do whatever the hell he said to do, right? He, he, they weren't having a problem with execution. He was just having a problem with the side. He, you were only solving the part that he wasn't yes. doing. So you didn't yes. need to add a component that was already happening with that yeah. guy. Yeah. And that's what this is. It, getting people to actually do things, that's what he's saying is 90% of the job. Sitting there and coming up with a plan is... Okay, I mean, it's you know, there's there's some small challenges to coming up with a plan, but not really. I mean, if you have time to plan, then you have time to assess different angles and look at things and come up and try different little courses of actions and run through some war games, some some possibilities, and then you got a plan. You're good. But getting people to actually execute that thing—that's what's a challenge. That's where things fall apart, by the way. That's where dreams die. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> Dreams die in execution. They don't, the dream comes out, man. The dream flourishes in someone's mind, right? People go, people live out the entire fantasy, the, the entire dream. People live out like Echo comes out up with an idea for a movie, right? Sure. He lives out the whole fantasy, the Oscar awards, <laughs> like the whole thing, the limos, like the red carpet. He's got a, that whole thing. Sure. But guess what? He fails on execution. Right. Like it's like, oh, but now I got to work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like now I got to take and I got to do this thing. Yeah. So dreams die in that, in that space between decide and act. That's where dreams die. Between idea and execution. That's where dreams die. Mm. And that's why. A leader, a leader's job is to make that execution happen. And here's the thing. This is another thing. So, Seth Stone, we got interviewed about uh, the Battle of Ramadi. And, and Seth told the interviewer that I had to like beat, I had to beat my head against the wall for every operation that we were able to do, which was an exaggeration. But the fact of the matter is, and I would tell that story to the young officers, like if you think you're going to do a mission without like making that mission happen, you're not going to be able to. You're, it's almost, it's very rare that you're gonna be able to, that, a, that an operation, you come up with a plan and, it, and like, okay, I set it in motion and now it's just gonna happen. No, you have to like fight every step of the way and that's the way it is in business, that's the way it is in life. Yeah, I, 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 I'm picturing trying to convince other people that, that you need to be on board with when you've come up with a plan, knowing that they're going to have to be on board with that plan. And when, when he says you're going to beat your head against the wall, I, I think, like you said, your point is just the amount of sheer work that it takes. You don't just like, hey, you guys. And they're like, cool. And it just happens. It's all the other people and all the things they have to do and where leadership comes in on that just to convince people. And I hate to say it. There are times that are people are out there that just want to say no. They just want to say no to your plan. Oh, yeah. And you, especially if there's rank involved, 
You can't just tell those people what to do. You gotta lead your way around those things. And there's so much harder than sometimes people give credit for. And how often I'll see people run into a, a barrier and then stop and, and give up then. And so I, I literally wrote down dreams die in execution. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> funny when you say it, but that's the hardest part. Not the, I could sit at my desk and I would do this all the time in Ramadi. I had these ideas like, hey, we're gonna do this. We're gonna go here. We're gonna make all these things happen. And then reality is in there, and the hardest part about there that is the people you have to get on board to making this stuff happen. Not your people going ready to go execute, but all the things that get in the way of to the point where you can go execute that plan.